Hi everyone, welcome to introductory Python tutorials for image processing and we are in the middle of discussing uh, transfer learning and in fact for the last few videos we have been talking about semantic segmentation especially using UNET deep learning approach. In the past a few dozen videos ago we talked about semantic segmentation using traditional machine learning using random forest uh, light gradient boosting and XG boost and so on. So let's do something fun. Let's actually mix deep learning and the traditional machine learning and uh, see if uh, we can benefit from them. What do I mean by that? Well, when is traditional machine learning very effective? When you don't have a lot of training data, when you have a little bit of training data, you can actually try to uh, you know, get away by using random forest and XG boost or others. And with that approach, you have to feed these because random forest or XG boost are just classifiers. You have to feed the appropriate data to these classifiers, meaning appropriate attributes or features. How do you generate the features? So we take our images and we apply, uh, we applied uh, uh, Gabor filters and we applied uh, Gaussian filters and edge detection filters and we generated a whole bunch of features. In fact, we did engineer our own features and we fed those into these random forest algorithms, you know, and gradient boosting to train them. And then that's how we built our traditional machine learning. Please go back to basics and watch those videos if you haven't done that. Yeah, it's very important. Here, what we're trying to do is, we don't know whether Gaussian filter or certain combination of Gabor uh, features are the right feature extractors. How do we know what the right features are that uh, are designed to understand texture and roundedness and uh, you know uh, corners and, uh, and so on? With deep learning, in the last couple of tutorials, we learned about transfer learning especially VGG or ResNet, one of these architectures that are trained on millions of images, they already know how to detect these features. So what if we take that and use that as a feature extractor instead of designing our own feature extractors using Gabor's and, uh, and, and so on? That's the point of this uh, tutorial. Use the pre-trained architecture with pre-trained weights as feature extractor and remove the classifier part, but then attach your own gradient boosting or random forest to make it into a, uh, a, a hybrid, uh, hybrid uh, segmentation uh, approach. So here, what we're talking about is, for example, if you look at the VGG16, we looked at this, uh, this, this graphic in the last few uh, videos, and the plan here is, again, I'm skipping through this that we have already talked about. The plan here is, let's take this, and our goal is not to classify our images into one of the thousand classes. We are not classifying this into an elephant or uh, a camel or one of these other animals or objects. We, our goal is to segment every pixel. So what we plan on doing is just supply our images and extract features up to whatever layer we want. In this example, I'm just showing you two layers because at the, uh, after the first convolution layer and the second convolution layer in VGG16, we'll have 64 features already. So let's take those 64 features and supply those to our classifier. Again, this can be random for support vector machines, XG boost. I'm going to show you XG boost, uh, gradient boosting, but it can be any of those. Uh, why XG boost? Because you can use GPU. It's faster, much faster. That's why we are going to look at uh, XG boost. But once you have that, then go ahead and segment your uh, images. That's it. So let's uh, jump to the code. And again, as usual, I'm going to share the code with you. So please pay attention to the video. Okay, and let's stick with our multi-class semantic segmentation example. We are we have been working with uh, in the last few videos because again this is not uh, you know this shows you how you can use this for not just binary but real life scenario of uh, uh, sem multiple multi-class semantic segmentation. Uh, I already uh, explained our goal, which is uh, using VGG16 for feature extraction and then XG Boost for segmentation. That's it. Now, what, what do we mean by XG Boost? Hopefully, you watched the video. Uh, if not, uh, go ahead and pip install uh, XG Boost. But I think uh, our, uh, our collab should already come with that thing pre installed. We'll check that in a second. I should go ahead and connect this. 
uh, sorry I should have been a bit more prepared let's terminate the one that we were running in the previous video and let's connect this again we are going through all the steps that I know that you will go through so everything any surprises will catch them right away uh, one thing as part of XGB classifier is you can define a GPU ID here and uh, we'll do that later on you'll find out exactly how to do that in a minute but uh, I've done that and I believe I've already connected my Google Drive so just to confirm that we can load our images so let's uh, import our libraries nothing new everything standard right there same we have been working with this data set for the last few videos so you know exactly what these steps are now if you load all 1600 uh, images then Google may yell at you I mean sorry the collab it will crash because you cannot load all those images in your memory and when you extract your features we are extracting 64 features for example right so that would be 500 images each image of a certain size probably 128 by 128 and then 64 features and I think it will crash go ahead and try it so for now let's just do uh, let's just do 50 images again I've already trained so I'm loading these just so we can uh, we have some images to uh, for testing purposes let's go ahead and load these images these two steps will take time because this is the first time we are doing so it takes it takes a little while uh, all I'm doing is just going through you know these these uh, directories where I have a bunch of images sorting the files and from zero to so many numbers like the first 50 images go ahead and load images as RGB images and convert this entire thing into a NumPy data set that's NumPy array I'm not expanding the dimensions in this case uh, I'm not expanding the dimensions because we are going to do XG uh, we are going to well, well we'll get to that in a second in fact we need to get this into the right shape to extract the features okay so let's go ahead and print this out like usual so we have total 1600 images we loaded 50 each 128 by 128 by 3 and we have 50 images uh, and 128 by 120 these are masks by the way yeah and uh, my max pixel value is 255 and my labels are 1 2 3 4 so let's go ahead and encode the labels so they are 0 1 2 3 it doesn't matter right now but the reason I'm doing this is later on I want to check what the intersection over union is for that I, I would use Keras and Keras assumes that the pixel values or the labels are 0 1 2 3 right if I do 1 2 3 it thinks that I have uh, five classes if I do 1 2 3 4 it thinks that I have five classes one starting with zero that's why just to minimize any confusion just go ahead and encode this to zero one two three let's uh, normalize our images and split this to training and testing up to this point the code is pretty much the same as what we have used before now from keras.models import model and from applications VGG import VGG 16 we know what this means if you watched my couple of videos uh, the last couple of videos so again we are not importing the entire uh, VGG 16 model we are importing the model without the top meaning without the dense layers and we are uh, with an input shape of uh, whatever input we define right so the original input of this VGG 16 when you when you actually import it the original shape would be 224 by 224 by 3 these are the original images and if you include top equals to true like the dense layers and if you say okay my new input shape is uh, 128 by 128 it doesn't like that uh, so if you do input top equals to false because these are all fully convolutional layers you can you can change them you can uh, you're not fixed to 224 by 224 so uh, that's exactly what we are doing my size is 128 by 128 by 3 and then for layers in vgg model.layers meaning in this model for each layer go ahead and set my layers as non trainable layer dot trainable equals to false which means all of these parameters i'm not training i mean it doesn't matter how many ever parameters it shows so let's go ahead and run these lines so it imports vgg16 with the image net weights without the dense layers and designed for this input shape 
and setting all of these as false and then giving a model summary. So there you go. This is input is 128 by 128 by three, all the way down, four by four by 512. And these many parameters, 14.7 million, how many of them are trainable? Zero, because we set everything to non-trainable. Because we want to use this as feature extractor. We don't want to train a deep learning model. We want to use the existing weights as feature extractor, that's it. Okay, now, we are all set. We just need to say where to stop. Let's actually do up to this point, block one, con two, because here we don't have to resize images or anything. So here we have 64 features. So let's cut our, uh, cut our model up to this point and then apply that to our input images to get features. We'll see what that means in a second. Okay, so my new model that I'm going to define is basically the model I mean, our model with inputs as VGG model input. Again, we did this in the last couple of videos. So we are slowly building on the knowledge we gained. So my inputs are going to be the VGG model dot input, which is 128 by 128 by three. And my output is going to be VGG model dot get the layer block one convolution two, which is block one con two right there. Effectively, we are just saying that, hey, this model is basically that. That's exactly what we are doing right there. And then print out the new model summary. That's what it's going to do, these four layers. What happens when I apply that model, new model, to my input data? It's going to give me features of size 128 by 128 by 64. That's exactly what my goal is here. So that's what I'm trying to do. My features equal to my new model dot predict. How do you apply a new model? dot predict, right? Model dot predict on what? On my x data. That's what we are trying to do, uh, predict right there. So it should be relatively uh, quick. Okay, and again, remember that there is no training going on here. We're just applying existing weights onto my input image. It's like it's like just uh, filtering your images using all of these uh, all of these filters, digital filters. Okay, now let's uh, let's print out just like we have done the last uh, in the last video. Let's print out the filtered responses to my input image, and here is all the filtered responses. So these are all the features that we have generated. Remember, this is very similar to what we have done with Gabor, except there we engineered our Gabor for our specific, uh, you know, theta and specific uh, uh, sigma and so on, and here. These are all learned weights from VGG16 on ImageNet. And I'm applying those, so it's learning about different features right there. And these are all our responses. And this is exactly what's going into my gradient boosting, so it gets trained. So if you, the next step is obviously in random forest and gradient boosting, uh, you're not sending these 64 channels of information. You have to collapse your pixels into right there, and then 64 of these. This is what goes into your into your uh, gradient boosting or random forest. Same thing with my Y. I'm reshaping them because you cannot just send 2D images into random forest, right? So we are collapsing all the pixels into 1D. There you go. And what values do we have in our Y? 0, 1, 2, 3, because we encoded them into uh, 1, 2, 3. Now here, you don't have to convert them to categorical like you do in your uh, deep learning, we can just use it as is. So if you want to use random forest, here is the code for random forest, two lines, but let's go ahead and use XGBoost. I have already trained, but I'll uh, just walk you through this code. From XGBoost, uh, I mean, you're importing XGBoost as XGB, and we are using XGB classifier. And this is the important part if you're working on Colab or if you have, uh, if you have uh, a modern GPU on your system. Uh, tree method equal to GB, GPU hist and GPU ID equals to zero. In my case, that's that's what the GPU ID is. And uh, this defines that. This uh, defines the use of GPU. Otherwise, it uses CPU, which is very slow. Very, very slow. This is extremely fast. Uh, almost 100 times faster, I should say. And then you will do model.fit. And I just saved it or pickled my model into, into a file. Now I'm going to load that, okay? So file name is that, and not pickle dump. Pickle dump is I'm saving it. Let's load a saved file. From here on, we can, we can run these lines. So what am I trying to do now? Well, my new model.predict on my test images. 
I think I have 10 images per test. And then these are my features, right? When you apply your new model.predict, what is it doing? It's actually uh, extracting the features, yeah? And your X test features are these, we are reshaping them. So you have these many features, 64. Don't be confused again. So far we trained a model on our training data set and we saved it as a pickle file. Just think of this as saving your Keras model. But now we want to test it on our test images. How did we process our tra uh, training images? We extracted the features. We reshaped the features into a single you know, uh, vector for each of these uh, feature uh, images. That's exactly what we are doing even for our test images. And then I'm predicting it. How do you predict? Model.predict, right? So in this case, loaded model.predict on my X test features, and there you go, it predicted it. And my ground truth also, let's load the ground truth because we have a corresponding mask. Let's also load the ground truth. There you go, my ground truth should be pretty much exactly the same size, right? Now we have these two vectors, so which means we can go ahead and use metrics.accuracy score, your ground truth and y predict, right? So this gives us what the accuracy is. So between these two images, between the predicted image and the ground truth, the accuracy is 93.3%. That's pretty excellent. But accuracy doesn't tell you everything about uh, uh, semantic segmentation or that's not the right metric. So let's use intersection over union and we have done this many times, so let me skip through this. We get 79% overall IOU on this image. And uh, yeah, this one is doing pretty bad, right? Class 2, only 50% IOU. And let's go ahead and plot it. A couple of images. Again, this area is a bit messy, but that's the class that is very difficult to segment. Anyway, there you go. Everything looks fine. So the summary of this video is using, using, sorry, these features as input. How did we extract these features? We extracted them by defining our VGG model and taking up to a certain level and then applying that model, like in this case, these two layers, applying that model to my input images and, and to generate these uh, features and then everything is pretty much the same as what we have done a couple of dozen videos ago on the topic of XGBoost. Thank you guys. And in the next video, let's use exactly the same approach, but for classification problem, let's do some classification instead of semantic segmentation. Thank you.